You're a one kilogram animal sitting out there on the snow waiting to get a date. <laughs> so when animals end hibernation, they enter their reproductive season right away. And their reproductive season is fast and furious. It's roughly a week, 10 days in length. So if you stayed in hibernation a little bit too long, you missed it. There's a, a really big difference in behavior between males and females. Females enter hibernation quite early in mid-August. Males stay up later, they cache a lot of food, and they do this because they end hibernation earlier than females, and then they spend a substantial amount of time below ground in their burrows feeding on this food cache. They need to do this because they have to regrow their testes each year, and this takes several weeks. They are also able to um, replenish their um, lipid stores, which they've depleted throughout hibernation, and regain any of the muscle tissue they might have lost during hibernation. And in this way, males are able to emerge to the surface before females, but in a condition where they're ready to mate with females, and they're ready to fight with other males for access to females. They're coming above ground in early April. Early April at Tulik, up on the North Slope, is characterized by 100% snow cover, ambient temperatures minus 20, minus 30, even minus 40. If you get up a little bit too early, there's a good chance that you will not survive until green up, which occurs in the middle of June. So they have to remain rhythmic. And you know, looking at their natural history and their timing, just in a very cursory fashion in the early years, led us into this idea of, well, let's start looking at clock function. How do these animals maintain rhythmicity when they should be arrhythmic? How do they maintain their phenology of entrance and exit from hibernation when what we know of the clock tells us that it shouldn't be functioning at low tissue temperature. Our work really involves a mix of lab-based work and field-based work. Our field-based work, we deploy body temperature loggers, and so we can measure hibernation under natural conditions. As endothermic animals go across the day, their body temperature shifts. Same thing happens to us. When we go to bed at night, our body temperature drops about two degrees. In anticipation of dawn, our body temperature rises, and that's one of the reasons we're waking up in the morning, is that our biological clock is ramping up our metabolism in order to prepare us for getting out of bed and grabbing that first cup of coffee. We can track changes in body temperature and determine what phase of the day the animal is active, see how that compares then to its light exposure and seeing if those ever dissociate or what their relationship is. We know from other work that people have done with ground squirrels in the lab that they have a really strong circannual clock. So they have this endogenous clock in their brain that tells them what time of year it is. And this is likely what's responsible for triggering their end of torpor, that reduced metabolism period. We also see a tremendous amount of plasticity in when they actually emerge to the surface. And so we're interested in understanding how they determine what conditions are like on the surface when they're sequestered in their hibernacula with a, a meter of snow uh, above them. I think the circadian clock stops ticking. Uh -huh. And there's another clock that we know of by evidence, but not by finding it yet. And it's what's referred to as the circanial clock. We don't know where it is. We know it exists because there are things that happen even in the absence of photic cues. Like I can keep this animal in a dark environment it will st and constant food, and it will still hibernate. It'll still go through reproductive development. It'll still go through radical changes in body mass and metabolism. Um, independent of any cues and it'll do it on just about a 365 day period. It's about an 11 month period. So they free run on their annual cycle in captivity. Yeah. So what's his clock doing? 
Is it ticking? 